My daughter's favorite bath time toy is a wind-up duck. You know the kind. Wind the spring, put it in the water, and its flippers quickly spin around as it loses energy. This flipper action is supposed to make the duck move forward, but it never does. This illustrates a simple truth about moving through the water. Moving fast doesn't necessarily translate to traveling fast. The term stroke in swimming generally means the movement of the arm. It's much better to consider your stroke as the force production phase, or the phase of movement when your arm is in a vertical position, actively producing force under the water. Maximizing your force production during each stroke of your arm plays a key role in how far you can move forward with every stroke. In our previous Swimming 101 articles, we have covered a number of concepts and drills designed to help a swimmer put their body in the best position to do this. Balancing your body, coordinating your arm movement, catching the water, and stabilizing your body position all put your body into the best position to move forward. Once you get your body and arm into the perfect position to create force, the next step is to maximize how much force you create with your stroking movement. The physical concept ruling how this is done is fairly simple. When I push backwards against the water, the water resists the movement of my arm. This resistance is what separates us from my daughter's wind-up duck. It allows a swimmer to anchor their arm into position so that they can drive their body first towards and then past the position of their arm instead of just spinning. This resistance is known as form drag and it occurs anytime a body moves through a fluid. The larger the surface area of the body moving through the fluid, the larger the drag force that resists its movement and the bigger the opposing force it creates. This drag force functions much the same as the ground would for a baseball pitcher. Throwing the ball forcefully requires the pitcher to first push against the ground with his leg. This creates a reaction force that allows him to anchor his leg into position, similar to the way that a swimmer anchors their arm into position against the resistance of the water. Once he has done this, the pitcher then engages in a careful series of movement that allows him to put his whole body into driving the ball forward. This leaves us with two goals during the force production phase of our freestyle. One, we need to ensure that our arm presents the largest possible surface area to the water, and two, we need to ensure that we engage our whole body in the production of force. The best drill to use to accomplish these goals is kicking rotation drill. Start with one of your arms extended forward and the other extended backward. Rotate your torso so that it feels like it does when you swim. Kick four to six times in this position and then stroke so that your forward arm produces force as your rear arm recovers forward. When your arms move into the opposite position, pause and start kicking again. As you stroke, make sure that your palm faces backward and that your forearm remains slightly deeper than your body and close to a vertical position in the water. One of the best things about learning to maximize your force is that it lets you swim at different paces. In a longer race, you can reduce the force in your stroke to maintain your desired pace for longer. In a shorter race, you can increase your force to swim faster. If you'd like help learning this drill or are interested in learning more about your stroke, please visit us at Swim Love Swim School. We'd love to help you learn to swim fast, faster.